Yes, but Narendra Modi is a popular leader in India and they are hosting the G20 at the moment, this, uh, this uh, grouping, this meeting that happens every year of G20, 20 biggest nations in the world, although some of them aren't there. India, China and Saudi Arabia have opposed a proposal by Western countries to cut greenhouse gas emissions by 60% by 2035. And the Prime Minister of India, Narendra Modi, says Western countries must not impose restrictive climate change policies on the developing world. And uh, he wrote for the Times, the London Times, uh, not the Times of India, the London Times, uh, appearing to criticise the failure of Western countries to meet a pledge of spending £100 billion a year to help developing countries decarbonise, which is almost three years overdue. He also insists any action to tackle global warming must be complementary to develop development rather than risk holding back economic progress and that's a really really interesting argument here where you have developed countries like the UK saying to those that aren't developed like uh, India that are emerging and are, are developing uh, actually you know you've got to keep your emissions low because even though we didn't to develop our nation you should because we now have this orthodoxy well let's talk to Ben Pyle he's co-founder of Climate Debate UK Ben you're very welcome to Talk TV um, thank you for joining us uh, I mean Narendra Modi perhaps pointing out some of the hypocrisy of Western nations here what do you think Ben? Yeah, I think he's. I think he's probably right. I think most people understand he's right, and and uh, maybe maybe he should actually be lecturing us on climate change. Is 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 the real meaning of what he said? Um, the, the, it, this comes. This story has emerged as Britain has just proved that, that its own uh, climate change agenda um, it, it is nothing to write home about, as it were. Um, the, the, the yesterday uh, it, it turned out that despite we, the fact that we've been promised. Um, offshore wind power cheaper than the price of power from gas um, for the last six or seven years. Um, that that those claims have been untrue. Uh, wind farm uh, operators uh, uh, are, are are producing power vastly more than the the price of gas. And and uh, yesterday uh, no, there were no bids for uh, for pro uh, uh, producing power at a price, uh, uh, I think, 60, 60 pounds. Anyway, that's by the by. And also this week, we got new laws that suggested that we may uh, we may have to uh, have have uh, smart meters forced on us uh, by by uh, the cops if necessary. So the green agenda in the UK and of course uh, throughout the European Union is, is crum crumbling. And and so uh, Modi can see this and and can see that actually in in many cases it's it's the green agenda which is making basket cases. The European Union and, and Great Britain um, are we we are deindustrializing. Whereas India is very much choosing a path of industrialization. And there's, you know, there's, there's ben, ben, it's, it's not a great a line. Of, We're going to try uh, and get you back a on a. Poverty in India. Ben, sorry to interrupt you. It's just not a great line. You're just coming in and out a little bit. We'll maybe try and re establish that line and come back to you, Ben Pyle. Interesting text here from Chris in Newbury who says, Peter, there are 106 million petrol powered motorbikes in Indonesia, 62 million in Vietnam, 21 million in Thailand, 200 million in India, all powered by fossil fuels. Will their sale be banned in 2030? Of course not. The eco lunatics are trying to simply make the West poorer. We'll try to come back to Ben in a second, but I'll read out a couple of other messages as well. Ben in Chester says, we should have a minister for idiots. Oh no, I think we do already. It's called the government. John says, net zero is hurting the poorest people so badly, Labour should be ashamed of themselves. Well, it's actually the Conservative government under Theresa May, which um, put net zero forward and passed it. And Cliff in Berkshire has been in touch on this as well, saying, you know, why, uh, should, why should they be allowed to uh, bind future governments. Well, certainly future governments could say no to net zero, but given the fact that it is um, that it is uh, policy now and also has been the policy of Labour and the Liberal Democrats as well, net zero is uh, is a policy there. And um, this is this is this is now this is now government policy. This is what we want to do. Uh, ben, I understand is back. Ben Pyle, co-founder of Cl the Climate Debate UK. Sorry, uh, you got interrupted there by the technology. Ben, just make the point you were just making uh, before we we cut you off there, if you don't mind. Yes, yeah, I think for the last twenty or so years, the whole of the uh, continent of Europe has been seeking its own deindustrialization, and it hasn't really considered what what its own what the implications of that are of that are for its own population, um, and what the geopolitical uh, consequences of that are. And so, someone like Modi is going to take a look at the European Union and the UK's uh, climate agenda and say, "Well, you've been uh, abolishing domestic production of shale gas or, or conventional gas." 
it's and making yourself dependent on your on your geopolitical enemies in 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 the world which is a it, it, that that's the that's the message that european and western greens are sending out to what's called the global south these emerging economies so so prime minister modi is probably making these calculations the, the, these first world countries with the one of the, you know places like germany one of the richest com countries in the world cannot manage its own its own uh, net zero agenda so so the the lectures that he rightly points out have been sort of wagging their finger at the emerging economies um, are, are for naught really I mean they just they, they just speak to um, the, the intransigence of, of, of Western leaders um, um, and and their lack of um, uh, future sightedness as it were their, their lack of their lack of clarity um, so that you know the, the, and it's a bit of a mystery to many people uh, I think why net zero is even on the policy uh, agenda at all because it's not as if there's been a vote for it in the UK um, whereas I I India seems to be ver very much a democratic, um, you know, fi finding its and its way, its future um, democratically, uh, not not as we seem to be, um, surrounded by strange green organisations that insist we must get rid of our boilers, uh, ban ban our cars. Um, and so on and so forth. These are things that Indians are going to be looking forward to as their GDP increases, and it and it has increased, I think, at 450 percent since the turn of the century. Um, so, so India's got a lot of a lot of future ahead of it, whereas we seem very determined to um, put a full stop to ours, and 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 our governments seem intent on spreading that around the world. So th there's a very curious and weird global politics going on, um, and it, and it's not. I'm not. Nobody's really sure. Well, what what are people like Rishi Sunak? What are leaders like Ursula von der Leyen, who's not even elected? What are they doing going around trying to make uh, climate, make other countries, emerging mm. economies, um, net zero compliant? When when we're not even doing it properly here. It's it's a you know it's a it's a chaotic mess. Is, is it desirable, do you think? Is it reasonable, Ben, for uh the UK to have net zero by twenty fifty to say there won't be any cars uh, that are petrol or diesel powered on sale by twenty thirty? Is that realistic, do you think? No, of course it's not realistic, and and I think we've seen already. You know, so so we've got ULEZ causing chaos chaos for uh, Sadiq Khan and Labour um, in 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 London with just, and that's just a very a relatively small um, part policy change, a little a relatively small policy intervention. Um, compared to net zero, which is just going to sweep people, it's going to try to sweep people's cars away. So, so the, 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 this is the beginnings of the test, the political mm. test of the green agenda. Is it in in the West? Is it possible to 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 stop people driving? Is it possible to create zones out of people's uh, homes, uh, 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 out of parts of town? You know, to separate people. Um, and is, is it is it possible to uh, take people's boilers away? And I. I think the next 10 or 20 years are going to really show uh, the, the political class that they've made a huge error in, in, in thinking they can inflict this on the domestic population, never mind on a population that as large as India's, which is, which is it's growing economically, yeah. um, as, as is China's well, well, and, th and other countries. Well, I think John and Burnham on C, uh, who is texting me, agrees with you, Ben. He says, hello, Peter, I always enjoy your show. Thanks, John. Uh, we should not be lecturing these countries like China and India and other Asian economies about their energy policies. We have outsourced most of our manufacturing to these countries to make all the goods we enjoy. Let's support them wherever we can. And also Paul says, can we really call India a developing country when it has landed on the moon? I think that's a fair point. Yeah, well, the, the category of, of, of developing country has always, always been a little bit suspicious. Um, so, so I, I have some sympathies with that. Uh, it, it, it's got a, it's got a space program and it's got a nuclear weapons program, and now it's finding its own way. And I think, I think that's what we need to, we maybe we need to take those kind of messages. Not that we need to develop a a, a nuclear bomb. Uh, Bomb program, we've already got that, but um, we, we should be looking a bit more about it towards industrialization and improving the economic uh, uh, situation that we, we we find ourselves in. Not trying, uh, and, and for a long time, the, the green agenda has been wrapped up in promises that we're going to have green jobs, green growth, green industrial revolutions. And none of this has, has, has materialized. These, these promises have just been sort of uh, made and then. Um, almost forgotten and uh, you know we, we have 
growing levels of energy poverty now. That's something that the political parties promised that they were going to uh, uh, abolish at some mm. point. Um, so, so I think uh, really the green the green agenda has been ex sort of it's been target led. But none of the politicians that have created those targets have had any idea about how those targets are going to be realised. So it's just been all, all of these targets are legally enforceable. Um, um, uh, different organisations can take the government to court to force them to, to uh, impose net zero targets. But none of the promises that are made, none, none of the green jobs, the green industrial revolution are legally enforceable at all. So, so you, all the upsides just get forgotten. All the promises get forgotten, um, leaving only the, uh, the 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 bans on boilers and the bans on on cars. Ben, thank you so much. There, that's Ben Pyle, there, co-founder of Climate Debate UK, and we need to have a debate about this. We've had some breaking news from India, actually. Narendra Modi, the man I mentioned there, the Prime Minister of India, he says a consensus has been reached on a G20 declaration, despite major differences by members over Ukraine. Well, we will bring you more on that throughout this programme if we get more information between now and one o'clock. But that breaking news that uh, the Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi says a consensus has been reached on a G20 declaration, despite major differences between members over Ukraine.